Hey everyone! Hi! Welcome, Welcome to, to Puerto Vallarta! In this video, we're going to take you along as we travel from the San Francisco Bay Area to beautiful Puerto Vallarta. We'll show you what you need to know about navigating the airport and getting through customs, how to get a taxi from the airport to your hotel, and where to get pesos for the best exchange rate. We'll also give you an overview of the four main hotel zones to help you decide where you want to stay. We'll share with you which one we prefer and show you some of the reasons why it's our favorite zone. Stick around to the end of this video to see just how crazy and packed this airport can get on a weekend during the high season. Let's get started on this adventure. Let's hit the road. Hi, I'm Avi. And I'm V. Join us in our explorations of the central coast of California. And our adventures beyond. Hey my friends, we are on the flight to Puerto Vallarta right now and we're crossing over the border so they're about to hand us a customs form. The FMM is a short and simple form that, along with your passport, is all an American citizen will need to enter Mexico. It's currently in the process of being phased out, so depending on which port you enter the country through, you may not need to fill this form out at all. If you do need to fill it out, you'll be given one on the plane or at the airport. It's very important that you do not lose the half of the form that is given back to you when entering because you may be asked to turn it back in when you go to leave the country. Well, that took just a few minutes. Yeah. Not very long at all. A little tip, actually. We're coming from California. It was raining in San Jose this morning when we left. It's very cold and Vallarta is very warm. So one thing that I found is actually wear my Vallarta clothing on the plane underneath my travel clothing from San Jose. So I've got a pair of shorts on underneath these jeans. You can feel the plane getting warmer and warmer the more southern latitude we get to. So sooner or later I'm going to change. After landing, the first checkpoint you're going to encounter is immigration. Here you'll be called up to the desk by groups. You'll all need to show your passports, so have them ready. And you may need to show the FMM form as well. You'll be asked how long you're staying in Mexico and possibly where you're traveling from. Make sure you're not wearing any hats or sunglasses before approaching the desk. First bathroom sighting right there. Yeah. Bathrooms are there. You'll get your passport stamped and your papers will be handed back to you before you move on to baggage claim. Well, that was pretty quick. Maybe 10 minutes, maybe 15 tops. I don't even think it was 15. That was good. Yeah. So we're gonna have to go get our bags, then we're gonna go get pesos. So we're gonna show you guys how to get that next. If you didn't check any bags, you can head straight to the security line. If you do have to go to baggage claim, keep in mind that PVR is a very busy airport with only a few carousels. If immigration took any time at all, there's a good chance your flight's bag got to baggage claim before you did, and one or more other flights have already used the same carousel. So make sure you check around and off to the sides of the carousels as bags are quickly offloaded and lined up there to wait for their owners to come and claim them. After retrieving your bags, you go through security. This is the final checkpoint you'll have to go through before exiting the airport. Here is where you turn in your FMM card, if applicable, and you may be asked what's in your bags. They'll have you push a button that will activate either a red or green light at random. If it's green, you'll be handed back your half of the form and instructed to loan your bags into the x-ray machine. If the light is red, congratulations, you've been selected for additional screening. Your bags will still be x-rayed, but then they will be opened up and looked through. This usually only takes a few minutes, and if they don't find anything suspect, you'll quickly be on your way. Here's where you ignore everybody, because they're going to try and tell us, sell us timeshares. So no, no me molestes. You don't need a ride, you don't want to drink, just keep walking, don't acknowledge anyone. Yep, just, just ignore everybody, walking. yep. Sorry. As you're passing through the airport, you will see these money exchange counters along the way. We do not recommend that you get your pesos from these. 
just walk right past them. Before you exit the airport, directly across from the main doors, you'll find a row of ATMs along the far wall. This is where we recommend you get pesos. When using an ATM in Mexico to make a withdrawal, you will always have to accept the ATM's use fee. This can range between 30 to 70 pesos. You will later be given the option to accept or decline the conversion rate from your currency to pesos. Always decline this conversion rate. You will then be given your bank's conversion rate, which is always going to be a better deal for you than the ATM will offer. Make sure that you're using an ATM associated with one of the main banks in Mexico, such as Santander, BBVA, Banorte, or HSBC, among others. And always look for one that is in a secure location, such as inside the airport, or in a major supermarket, or an ATM attached to the bank itself. Try not to use these generic, freestanding ATMs that are in completely unsecured locations because they are more susceptible to being used by scammers. We actually stopped. We're gonna get a little refreshment here. It's kind of nice. They have an open bar, open air bar, right, right outside the door. So it's they're waiting for you if you're thirsty. So a little cheers. The time. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go get a taxi. So. People will suggest taking the pedestrian bridge that crosses the highway in order to save some money on an Uber or a taxi because the cars can pick you up from there without having to pay the airport transfer fee. However, we don't recommend doing this and we don't do this ourselves anymore either. You only save about $10 and even with carry-on luggage only, to us it's just not worth the schlep. It's important that you pay attention to your taxi number in case you leave anything in the car. Let's get the taxi number just, just in case. Hola, hola, buen día. Amigo, ¿cómo estás? Muy bien, ¿y tú? Muy bien, amigo. They got to check in with dispatch first. So in case you think you got your taxi and then you're like, wait a minute, where are we going here for a second? They have to check in with their dispatch before we hit the road. Hola, let's go. Let's go. If you're new to Mexico and you don't speak at least decent Spanish, we recommend you just take Ubers to get around town. There are several reasons why we recommend this. One is the cost. They are a little cheaper than taxis. The second reason is there's no language barrier. You don't have to be able to communicate where you're going, you just input it into the map and the driver knows exactly where to take you. Thirdly, you don't have to carry any cash. With taxis, it's cash only. And you often have to have small bills because the drivers don't carry much in the way of change. With Uber, it's all on your credit card. Number four, if you leave anything in the car, it's very easy to get in touch with your driver in order to get your items back. Finally, if you're concerned about safety at all, there's always a record about who you're with and where you're going. So you kind of don't have to worry about that either. Puerto Vallarta is a big city with quite a few different zones and many different types of accommodations for you to choose from. For this trip, we chose to stay in an all-inclusive in the North Hotel Zone. I love it. <laughs> for me, all people. Oh yeah? Kids. That's that's what we wanted. <laughs> no kids, no people in the pool. Exactly. Yeah, right. <laughs> Exactamente. <laughs> However, we've stayed in all the different zones. We're gonna give you a quick rundown on the pluses and minuses of the four main ones in order to help you decide where you should stay depending on what you want out of your vacation. Starting with the marina. 
Tokyo, you'll find plenty of high-end resorts and condos. This is one of the more recently built areas of the city, so the infrastructure is very new and very modern. There's easy access to the airport and fancy high-end restaurants and malls nearby. You also are very close to the marina, so any boat tour that you could possibly want to take is just out the door. The minuses would be it's one of the pricier areas to stay. It's also kind of gringoized. It's less authentic than certain other areas of town, and beach access can be limited. You're also farthest from the downtown heart of the city area. You should stay here if you're looking to enjoy the beautiful weather that Mexico has to offer, but you will still want to stay somewhere modern without some of the nitty gritty that can go along with authentic Mexico. Just to the south of the marina is the North Hotel Zone. This is where most first time visitors to the city will likely end up staying, including us. Here you'll find a wide range of resorts at every price point to meet everyone's budget. There's everything from basic inns to four-star, all-inclusive beachfront resorts. It's a great place for families and groups because there's lots of activities to entertain everyone all day and night. There's lots of water and beach activities. Vendors and services are plentiful and nearby. There are large and expansive beaches with plenty of room for everyone to spread out in the sand. The drawbacks to staying here are its lack of walkability. Your dining options will be limited to your resort and what is within a block or so, unless you want to drive somewhere else. And even though it's closer to town than the marina, it's still a 20 to 30 minute drive to get there. Moving on to the South Hotel Zone. This is the area, obviously, to the south of the city where the jungle starts to meet the ocean again. It's a gorgeous coastline where you will find plenty of small secluded beaches perfect for swimming. In fact, many people say some of the most beautiful beaches to be found in Vallarta are in this zone. It's a quiet and peaceful place, and something that could be viewed as a pro or a con, depending on how you look at it, is there are few to no vendors to be found here. Some other cons to this area are the lack of services, nightlife, or restaurants nearby. Access is by car only, and you will have to drive to get here or anywhere else besides your resort. And keep in mind that taxis can be difficult to get during certain times of the day. You should stay here if you are looking to have a beautiful tropical beachfront vacation that is more quiet and laid back and you're willing to do a little bit more work in order to get that. Finally, we come to the Centro and the Zona Romantica. Technically, two different neighborhoods that kind of function as one. This is the main downtown area with many tourist attractions clustered together within a mile or so. It's the beating heart of the city, and by far our favorite place to stay whenever we come to Vallarta. The area has a wider range of accommodations, from basic hostels and budget inns to some smaller beachfront resorts, and no shortage of high-end condos with swanky rooftop pools. It's a very walkable area, full of beautiful, romantic cobblestone streets that wind their way through the historic architecture and along the river. It's a foodie's paradise here. There's every type of international cuisine you could possibly imagine available. You can find everything from fresh, delicious, authentic street tacos, really, really good, to four-star, world-class restaurants. There's a creative craft cocktail scene in the city, and you'll find plenty of oceanfront restaurants where you can eat with your toes in the sand. The colorful neighborhood is home to a wide array of street art displays, especially along the city's famous beachfront Malecon. The pedestrian-only boardwalk stretches for about a mile along the city's coastline. It's a great place to come day or night, to stroll and shop, eat and drink, and just rub shoulders with the community and experience what it's like to live here in Puerto Vallarta. All right, here we are at the Malacón. It's a gorgeous day. If you've never been to the city before, this is definitely one of the places you should not miss. This is the city's oceanfront promenade. There's a lot of amazing restaurants, beaches, bars, and clubs along the way. Got some good restaurants here. A little pricey, but they've got great views. Of course, our favorite restaurant is Patisicuetes. Definitely, no doubt. 
guess one other thing that you should be aware of is that not all of these places take credit cards. And so you're going to need to get cash. We love it here. It's a beautiful place, lots of things to see and do, and lots of holiday events as well happen along this uh, promenade. Yeah, we were here for both Christmas and Dia de los Muertos. There's local performances and a lively nightlife. So if you like what you're seeing so far, click like, hit subscribe, and ring that bell. And we'll get and you'll get notified when we drop our next video. If you're looking for souvenirs, you'll find them here. Sure, there's plenty of kitschy, touristy knickknacks, but there's also plenty of beautiful little boutiques and shops that you can find that sell local art and handmade items. Much of it is made in Mexico. And if you purchase from the booths that line the Malacone and the side streets or along the Rio Quale, you can pretty much guarantee you are directly supporting a local family. It is also the center of the city's art and cultural scene. Here we are at the Plaza Lazaro Cardenas, which is next to the Malecon. There are performances that could put on here. There's even some beautiful tile mosaic inlays on pillars and found elsewhere on benches and things like that. There's also a farmer's market that happens on Saturdays, so Los Altas Market. Yes, and there's all kinds of food and souvenirs that you can come and check out and take home and support local artists at the same time. So you gotta kind of maybe look on Facebook or Google a little bit, but it's like certain Saturdays at a certain time of the year from like nine until five. I think it's Saturdays, yeah. We'll put the time and the day on the screen. Mm -hmm. I've never been here for when that actually happens, but there is a turtle release program that happens out here too. I would love to do that one of these days. Right? It's gotta be so cute. If you name it, it's happening here. It's colorful, it's lively, and we absolutely love it here. There are some drawbacks to the area. It can be noisy, crowded, and a little dirty in places. Traffic can be a little overwhelming, and it is one of the most expensive places to stay in the city. You should stay in this zone if you're looking to be in the heart of all the action with everything just a step from your door. And no matter where you stay, we definitely recommend that you spend a day and or an evening in this beautiful, vibrant neighborhood. Always a party, they got fireworks going on now. Let's see what the performance ended up being. We're back at Plaza, Plaza Cristal. So, so one thing that I don't know if we'll be able to show it. Oh yeah, there it is actually. There's always an airplane leaving from the airport, which is visible from the Malecon. And I'm always counting down the days until that's my butt on that plane. <laughs> so let's take a look over there. Out in the distance, you can see a plane out there. Vamos al aeropuerto. ¿Cuánto cuesta, señor? 150 pesos. Muchas gracias. On the way to the air, on the way to the airport to leave. Adiós, Puerto Vallarta. We'll have to see you next time. Always the worst part of the trip. The very saddest, yes. One other difference between taxis and Ubers is that you're pretty much guaranteed to get seat belts in all Ubers. And you don't always get that in taxis and PB, hey? Yeah. So, a little word to the wise. I mentioned before that this is a very busy airport. We've always given ourselves two to three hours to catch a flight here, but we've never needed more than two. So this time we chose to push it a little, despite hearing stories about how busy it's gotten during high season this year. We didn't quite believe it until we saw it for ourselves. After encountering a traffic jam and major gridlock on the way into the airport, we quickly made our way to security where we were shocked at just how busy it was. It might be wise to not push it, you guys. We thought we had ample time, but this is the very busiest we've ever seen it, and we're, won and we're wondering if we're gonna get to catch our plane, so. We've never needed more than two hours to get to a flight here before. Uh, this line is 10 times longer than I've ever seen it. Yeah, 
we had, there was a huge backup leading up to the airport. We actually got out of our taxi and walked here amongst the, the cars, like through the cars that were trying to get into the airport. It was only a couple minutes though, not like we were super savage about it, but here's the line. Hopefully we make the flight. All right. Well, you guys, fortunately these lines are moving. Our plane doesn't leave for another hour, but boarding stops in about 45 minutes. I think we're about to make it. Wish us luck. We have made it. This is the Grand Hall. It's Grand Hall where there's a lot of gates for departure. So it's quite often advised that you get to your plane like two hours in advance and kind of trusted the Puerto Vallarta system to be a little quicker, but it's so busy. Let's take a look. Fortunately, I was able to find a little spot and put all of our stuff down and B is waiting for our food. Our boarding time got delayed which is good, just by like 15 minutes, which is enough time to eat. So, anyway, gotta plan ahead. These burgers are better than the all-inclusive, and we're on time. Okay, friends, we hope you enjoyed coming along for that video. Yeah, we had a lot of fun taking you along with us. We love this city and hope you can get a chance to check it out and fall in love with it too. Yeah, so thanks so much, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Super Serial.